grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. We're starting to learn a little bit about each other. I still remember when our pastor, David Bittler, did that and no one responded to him. He turned right around and left the building. He wiped his dirt off his feet and left the building. I still remember that. I will not do that. First, I don't know where the door is to get back in. Today's text, um, you know the Joshua text. It gives us a chance to talk about first the lectionary and how the lectionary uh, sees the scriptures. And the lectionary sees the scriptures as a way to somehow convey a meaning to us. And uh, most Sundays, not all Sundays, most Sundays I go, what are they thinking? What are they thinking putting these lessons together? But you know, they had, they had a purpose. And so today's Joshua text, I believe, is a great example of uh, using the text to bring us to a point, and that point is a moment of decision. God promised the land, right? Abram leaves his home to find the land, and they they go forever, right? We get we get Abram, Isaac, Jacob, gosh darn it, uh, Joseph, um, Moses, and all of them are promised a, a land. But none of them are given it. Okay? It's Joseph here. Or excuse me. It's Joshua here. Who's, who's done the hard work, quite honestly. The hard work is allowing God to kill everyone. I know that doesn't necessarily sit well with our culture today. But that's the reality of life. God's people needed a place to live. And everyone lived there. So God was, as the text says, making room for them by killing people. The Amorites. Not going to be a while, but I will not Now, if you notice in your text, we go 1 through 2, and then we go to 14. There's a gap here. What in the world is that gap? That gap is the story of what God has done. But the lectionary doesn't want us to see what God's done. The lectionary wants us to hold us in that moment of decision. Who will you serve now? Will you serve the gods of the past, or will you serve me? And the lectionary wants us to be in that moment of decision. Why do we want to be in that moment? Because it is hard following God. I don't know if you know it, there is a war out there, and it is a spiritual war, good against evil. I, I love the description of this suit here. We don't wear that same suit. And in some sense, the suit is irrelevant. What's relevant is it's a war out there. And who is the war with? Our text tells us. And I wish it wasn't a war against these people, but it is. It's a war against the rulers. That's rulers and the authorities. Trust me, Jesus had a problem with what? The authorities. And if that was all the battle was with, we would say, cool, or great, whatever you would use, but it isn't. It's worse. This is against the cosmic powers of evil. And yes, the spiritual forces are even where? In the heavenly places. This is a battle for your soul. And I, it, it, it's so easy to hear the words flesh and body from that John text. Why? Because we come and we say, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ. We understand that. That's not words that throw us off, but maybe these words would throw us off. Love your neighbor as yourself. Pray for those who would curse you. Help those in need. Get over what has gone in the past. Allow forgiveness in your life and move forward with God's love. I know it's, you say to yourself it's easy to do, but let's be honest for a minute. It's not. The world teaches me I'm right and it's my the war is with the world's values that we 
we get every single day. I don't know about you, but I do. Every day I get, what am I driving? What am I wearing? How am I doing something? When the, God says, love me with all your heart and all your mind. There's no room for God. I've got too much materialism in there. Then God says, love your neighbor as yourself. And I can't speak for you, but in 50 some years, I have found that impossible. Maybe I'm just getting bad neighbors. Worse, worse. Maybe I'm a bad neighbor. Today's text, they challenge us. The Joshua text, who will you serve? Will you see, serve me or the world? The next text, what will you stand up for? You've got an armor. You need to stand up for something. And what that is, is in our text, is for proclaiming the good news of God, that God loves all people. Go out and share that with your neighbors and your friends. God loves all people. God loves Republicans and Democrats, and I'll say it in here. It is a war out there. And yes, it's easy to say, let's eat some flesh and blood of Jesus Christ, because we know it's communion. It's not so easy to take the words that he says and accept those words, which is love your neighbor as yourself. Love God all that you have. I See, in the disciples, they started to leave, right? I love that text. Jesus says, eat my flesh and blood, and what happens? The disciples go that way. It's the twelve. And now Peter says, no, you are the son of the most holy God. That's who we serve. That's who we stand up for. And as we leave this place, no, it's not communion we're taking out there. It's loving our neighbor as ourselves. It's letting the past go, allowing forgiveness in our lives, and moving forward with God's love. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's silently contemplate the words we've heard and read today.